I would see these music videos of these young African-American men who look like me. They have the cars, and they have the girls, and they have the gold chains, and they have the money. I'm like, that's what I want. Remy Adeleke was born to a wealthy Nigerian entrepreneur and his American wife. Up to the age of five, Remy lived in the lap of luxury. But when his father died unexpectedly, his mom moved Remy and his older brother to the Bronx and a life of poverty. But money wasn't the only thing he missed. For me to not have a father to affirm me, or to guide me and provide for me and my brother, I began to search out father figures. His mom was a Christian who took them to church and taught them to follow Jesus. Instead, Remy looked to street hustlers and rappers as his role models and his way out of poverty. I just wanted my life and my brother's life and my mother's life to be better than it was. As a young teen, he went from petty theft to selling drugs. During this time, he also saw two films by director Michael Bay that showed him he could aspire to something better. The first one was Bad Boys and the second one was The Rock because that was the first time I saw two African-American men in Bad Boys who looked like me, but they were still cool and they were heroes. After I watched The Rock, you know, I filed away deep down within me this idea that I would be a Navy SEAL one day. But for a teenage dealer and scam artist making thousands, that dream seemed far out of reach. Chance of that happened is absolutely slim to none, right? And as time passed, that idea faded away. That is, until a drug dealer came into their home, threatening to kill Remy. Remy paid him off, but it was the wake-up call he needed. All of these years, I'm doing this dirt, and not only did I bring this dirt into my life, but I brought it to my mom's doorstep. I made the decision I'm getting out of this life. But now 19, Remy had no idea what to do next. Until one morning in bed, he heard a voice he didn't recognize. And his voice said to me, you need to join the military. And I was like, what? Heck no, I'm not joining the military, absolutely not. And I popped up and I looked around and I said to myself, Remy, what else do you have? Remy joined the Navy and signed up to be a Navy SEAL. He passed the grueling training and earned his trident especially coming from the background I came from and now achieving what I achieved and graduating from SEAL training, probably the most elite military program on the face of this planet. I was just very, very prideful, especially because I had achieved greatness. But Remy still had an emptiness that needed to be filled. I was in the clubs every weekend, sleeping around, partying. You know, I was vulgar, combative. I was out of control. And uh, I had a girlfriend at the time. You know, I cheated on her. I mean, I was just, I was just a bad dude towards her. And she wouldn't leave me. She stayed with me. And she would take me to church. During their relationship, Remy's team was sent to the Alaska wilderness for cold weather survival training. Alone on a hike, he again heard a voice, but this time, he knew who it was. I remember just walking through the wilderness and just mesmerized by the nature, the beauty, the silence. But in the midst of that silence, God began to reveal himself to me. God showed me what I had become. And I just remember feeling disgusted with what I saw. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna fix myself. I'm gonna change myself. Once back on base, he called his girlfriend. I just want you to know that when I get back, I wanna marry you. I'm gonna be a better man. I'm working on myself to change myself, but I'm gonna be better. And she said, I'm leaving you. It's over. I fell into a deep depression. And I remember my brother told me, when you hit rock bottom, because it's gonna happen, cry out to Jesus. When you've tried everything and nothing's worked, cry out to Jesus. And I finally said, Jesus, I need your help. But he was still reeling from the breakup and called his ex when he got home. Because in my naive, crazy mind, I felt like the answer to fixing my problems was her taking me back. So I said, please take me back. She said, no, I won't take you back. And I said, OK, if you won't take me back, can you at least take me to church? And then she paused. And then she said, OK, I won't take you back, but I'll take you to church. I just got up and I said, I need something greater than me. And if this Jesus is greater than me and if he's real, then that's going to be my solution. And so I went to altar and, and I surrendered my life to Jesus. Instantaneously, like, my life changed. Over the next three months, Remy let his heavenly father bring healing to his mind and soul. His presence was so tangible to me that 
I looked to him. This is my father teaching me how to treat women. This is my father teaching me how to be a man now and what real manhood is. In 2016, Remy left the military and started a consulting business. One day, he got an unusual call. They were filming a new Transformers movie and needed someone with his expertise for a small role. The director was Michael Bay. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Because this is the guy whose first two films inspired me to be SEAL. Today, Remy is still in the film industry as an actor and screenwriter. And he's enjoying his greatest role yet, as a husband to his wife Jessica and father to three sons. In his book, Transformed, he shares how God has guided his life even when he didn't realize it. I can go to my heavenly father to get direction, whether it's through prayer, through fellowship, or through the scriptures, you know. I have a father. No, I think when all of us are growing up, we're looking for someone to be the father, the mother, to give us direction, to explain what life is all about. Some people have that and some people don't. But when it's missing, when it's missing and we are left to our own devices, we make so many wrong choices. And we find ourselves in compromised situations. And yet, in almost every story I hear, it's the still small voice of God is coming from this side or from this side in a little way here, a little way there, even though we might not be willing to listen to it or recognize it initially. It makes impact. And then that moment comes that Remy's brother said comes to everybody when you come to the end of yourself. You know, there's something in us, I think, that makes us feel like I can fix this. I can get better. I, I can do this. I can eliminate that. But we don't. I mean, if we could get it together on our own, wouldn't the world look like a different place today? We cannot. We are a mess without God because we were created to have relationship with him. And so left to our own devices, directionless, we just spin out of control like Remy said he did. And then in a moment in time, God begins to reveal himself to us and he speaks to our hearts. And you know, I love the fact that Remy went to the altar and he committed what he knew belonged to God his life, but he didn't have it all together yet. You know what he did after that? He went to the Word. He started finding out who is God? Who are you, Jesus? Why, why am I giving my life to you? And how do I connect with you so I can live the way you created me to? You know, the Bible says that's available to anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. The surrender is the beginning, but the process that follows is what changes us. And so today, if you're looking for direction and focus in your life and you haven't found it, come to Christ. It's the whole reason he came for you, for your life, for your need. Get into the word of God. If you want to pray with someone today, there's always someone on our phone line. It's toll free, 1-800-700-7000. You can call right now. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.